Hello again, I am Blunty. Now, I've had a lot of you out there asking me, well, hassling me, begging me, prodding me consistently for quite some time now as to my opinion on the Nintendo 3DS. And my usual canned response to such a request is, I'll let you know when I bloody well get one. But as of right now, we're still a few months away from release, unless of course you're in Japan, because Nintendo doesn't like doing the worldwide simultaneous release thing. <sighs> Irritating. So let's churn away on my expectations of it. I'm excited by the idea of it. The 3D screen is really interesting. Gaming in 3D in a portable manner. Because, let's face it, 3D TVs, and I've said this in videos I've made about 3D TVs, I like 3D TV, but the almost complete lack of content is holding them back. The high prices is holding them back. The fact that you have to wear those glasses. A lot of people hate that. Holding it back. See, yes, this year there's more technology coming out where you don't have the glasses, but most of the mainstream is just going to wear this. Yeah. But because of all these things holding back 3D TV, 3D gaming in the home, which is, like I said in previous videos, again, the reason to own a 3D TV. It would be the reason I would buy one for gaming. Gaming in 3D is incredible. At least it is in high def, like I've tested it out with the PlayStation 3 and that. I'm not too sure about the resolution on the 3DS. It's much smaller resolution. Apparently it looks really cool. I mean, I haven't seen it in person yet, again. So this is all just thoughts turning around my head, not an actual opinion, because I can't form an opinion until I get it in my hands, so stop bugging me. But I'm excited by the idea of it. I think it will help push 3D gaming, and it will help push 3D content, because once everyone's got these relatively inexpensive little 3D screens with them they can take with them anywhere, there's a lot more reason to make content for that. And at CES 2011, there were news of a lot more 3D cameras coming out, particularly uh, stuff like the Sony Bloggy 3D, which is little pocket-sized things, you know, the flip-style cameras, little mobile phone-sized high-def cameras. Well, Sony have got a 3D version of it coming out, which I'm sure I'll get my hands on sooner or later to play around with. But, you know, that's a sim really simple, quick, cheap way to make 3D content for yourself. And people are viewing more and more video content on their mobile devices than ever before, up to 200 million video views a day according to YouTube people are watching on their on their phones and stuff and here you have the Nintendo 3S built in 3D screen cheap easily accessible internet connected device Nintendo and YouTube have to get together on this imagine watching 3D YouTube videos recorded either with the built-in cameras on the on the 3DS itself now Nintendo haven't said it can do video it can do stills I mean, 640 by 480, why are you doing this to us? Crappy low resolution again, Nintendo, please get your act together. Put high def cameras in there, they're really cheap. And I've got no doubt in my mind at all that there is enough grunt in that machine to be able to record 3D video and then use this lovely little internet connected device with a built-in 3D screen to upload it in 3D to YouTube. All YouTube has to do is figure out how to, because the, currently the 3D video that YouTube supports is via the glasses thing, which is, you know, the red and blue stuff. Lame. But you need to get Nintendo and, and the... YouTube guys in the same room together and get them cooperating on this and it will be a beautiful explosion of all new 3D content coming from people like us. But all that excitement about the 3D stuff aside, there are a couple of things about the 3DS that have come out recently that are starting to concern me, namely the horrific battery life. Between three and five hours um, of average use playing a, a 3DS game, up to seven or ten hours playing a, a regular DS uh, game apparently and that's <laughs> that's just not good enough and you know a year out from this they're going to release another model which will have a much much better battery so all the early adopters are going to get a oops, clip around the chin on that one. Oh and let's not forget the story I read about today on one of my favorite gaming sites Kotaku that has revealed that uh, it looks like the Nintendo 3DS is going to continue to use those god-awful Nintendo friend codes for online gaming. Universally regarded as the worst, most user-unfriendly piece of crap way of online gaming ever invented by anybody. Just give us usernames, god damn it. Just do it like everybody else does at Nintendo. Please, make it easy. I don't want to have to remember the 15, 16 digit friend codes and I have to exchange them and it's ridiculous. There has to be some middle ground with between the reasons you're doing that shit and making it easy for people. <sighs> but, you know, long story short, I'll be getting a 3DS on launch day if only to check it out and review it and I'll tear it to pieces if I need to tear it to pieces and I'll fall in love with it if I need to fall in love with it. But for right now, I'm optimistic. I'm looking forward to seeing... 
seeing where the, the 3D content train travels once this thing gets in people's hands. I'm excited to see how it evolves. And you must remember that even the, the 3DS, uh, the, the DSi, see I'm getting all confused now, the DSi, the first, the DS with the camera in it, when that first came out, you couldn't even upload photos to Facebook. When it first came out, you couldn't do that, but now you can. Now you can, it's easy, you can do it, it's simple. So just keep that in mind, that what you get on launch day, not the end of the story necessarily. Just pray that Nintendo listen to us and give us exciting things to do with it. Anyway, thanks for watching, I'm Blunty. I'll catch you next time.